Hi, it's Peter from MyJewelryBench.com. Welcome back, and we're going to, in today's video, cover the design and printing and modeling of this particular rope ring. We did one style with outside rims, and we did the second style without those outside rims, uh, rope lines going across the perimeter. Uh, the customer did not like those, so we ended up with this design, and we 3D printed it and got it ready for uh, casting as soon as she decides that she's going to approve it. In this tutorial, I'll be covering quite a few things in the rope design ring. I'll be covering the left and right twisted ropes, um, short, medium, and long. We'll be using the simple deform modifier to create those. We'll be using the curve modifier to adjust the position of the ropes along certain curves, the remesh modifier to remodel our mesh as we need to, the decimate modifier to cut down the number of faces, the Boolean modifiers for both union and non-destructive difference, as well as 3D printing the object or the ring and then examining it after we've cleaned it and painted it for the customer to view. And then hopefully she approves it and we'll move on to casting. So let's get started with this. Now, I've already made the ropes pieces that I need to do this job. But I'm going to show you how to make those because it's important that you know how to do that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my diamond, get that out of the screen, and we're going to enter or we're going to add in a new cylinder. So I'm going to do Shift A and let's turn on screencast keys so that we have those going. Tools, screencast keys. Okay, so you can see here in the lower left corner, I've got my screencast keys on. Okay, so I've already added uh, ropes into my Blender Gems library, and that'll be added to the library that's available for you guys to purchase the end of this month. Uh, right now it's not in there, but for the sake of saying that you need to learn how to model the ropes, let's get going by creating a new cylinder. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, I'm gonna come over to Mesh, and we're gonna add in a cylinder. I'm gonna come over to the properties for the cylinder before I make them permanent, and I'm gonna change this to 75. So there are 75 vertices around that. Now I need to make three of them. I'm gonna show you how to make one. Well, I'll show you how to make two of them so you understand how to do this. Okay, so we're gonna size this up and I'm gonna come over to item. We wanna make this, uh, let's see, 40 millimeters long along the Z axis. Okay, so I've got that going right now. And the next thing we need to do is to add in a bunch of loop cuts. So I'm gonna enter edit mode by pressing the tab key. I'm gonna hit control R and then you can see I've got loop cuts in there. I can use my mouse wheel to add, or I can just type in, I'm gonna do 165, and then press enter twice to make those permanent. So now I've got a cylinder with 165 loop cuts on it, and it's divided into 75 uh, vertices from top to bottom. That gives me a, a good detail here. I'm gonna go back into object mode by pressing the tab key. And I'm gonna look at this from the top view, so you can hit the tilde key and go to top view, or you can press seven on your numeric keypad, either way. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna grab the cylinder, I'm gonna hit Shift D to duplicate that, and I'm gonna hit G to move it, and I'm gonna move it along the X axis, about like so. And now I'm gonna do that one more time, Shift D and then G, and I'm gonna move that over here. So it's about in the middle, just like that. Now I've got three cylinders that I want to combine and then twist into a rope type texture or material. So let's grab the first one and we're gonna hold the shift key down. We're gonna grab the second one and I'm gonna come over to my Boolean uh, operations, which in my case is under edit. You, can, you might have those anywhere else. And we're gonna do a union and it'll merge those two cylinders together. I'm gonna hold the shift key down and grab the third one. And then again, we're gonna do a union on that. So now all three cylinders have been combined into one. I'm gonna hit tab key, we're we'll gonna hit all, um, just to take a look at how this is meshed. And you can see it's been meshed pretty well. Uh, we've got these little things on top, but we don't have to worry about those. They're gonna be irrelevant for our modeling purposes. Let's go back into object mode. I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna come over to center, select the set origin. I'm gonna set, select center of mass. That looks good for now. And I'm going to press Shift S, and I'm going to put this into the middle of the uh, viewing port. Okay, so my object is now centered in the viewing port, and now what I have to do is create a twist to this. So we're going to use uh, a modifier that I haven't gone over yet, I don't believe, but we'll grab it now. So I'm going to come over to my modifiers tab here. 
Let's make this a little bigger so you can see it. And I'm going to hit Add Modifier, and I'm going to come down to Simple Deform. So with that selected, we're going to select Twist. We can do Bend, Taper, and Stretch also, but we want to twist this. I also want to twist it along the Z axis and not the X or Y, so I'm going to select the Z. And now I can move this back and forth, and you can see it twists my model one way or the other. When you're using your mouse to do this, you can only go to 360 degrees or negative 360 degrees. What I really want to do is get a, a much more twist on this to make it look more like a rope, but keep a round shape. So I'm going to select this, and I'm going to type in 2400 and press Enter. And you can see it kind of deforms our model just a little bit. It, it kind of elongates the rope. So I'm going to drop this down to 2200, and that looks a little bit better. I'm going to shade smooth so you get a better idea of how that looks. What I'm trying not to do is create a sharp butt here, but we want to make this look like a rope. Um, that's how I would do it that way, and that gives me a left-handed twist. So a left-handed twist would be twisting it like this. Let's just smooth flat so we can see that. And you can see it twists from bottom to right in a left or counterclockwise motion. If I want this to twist the opposite way, very simple. I can hit Shift, Duplicate, and Enter. And I'm going to move this along the x-axis. And now I need a rope that's going to twist the opposite way. So I'm going to select that and do negative 2200. And you can see now they twist exactly the opposite as the first model does. So, perfect. That's exactly what I want to do. And that's why I had to make several different versions of this. That's how you would make these, and you can make them as long as you want or as short as you want. Now, there's one thing to keep in mind. This particular model that we're going to work with today, we have to use a small, a medium, and a long version of this. To keep the perspective, we have to change the angle on the simple deform modifier. So for instance, if I shorten this down to a shorter version, I'm gonna hit S and then Z to size along the Z. You can see what it does, it sharpens our edges and we don't want that. So I'm gonna drop this down to negative 1600. And you can see, there we go, we've got a nice uh, model that's shorter but yet has about the same twists in it. And you can play with your settings and get those to be whatever you want and that I encourage you just to go play with the modifiers in Blender. Again, we're doing a double rope type anchor chain link for this ring. So um, the, if you look closely at my final model in the beginning, um, you can see we have uh, opposite twists kind of merged together. And that's what I'll need to do this model. Okay, so with that said, let's just get rid of these. And I'm going to start with the basic shape of the ring. <clears throat> So we have to make a link that is the anchor link, one link itself, with an overlapping joining link. Now to do that is very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A, I'm going to come down to Curve, we're going to add in a circle. So I'm going to add that in, and I'm going to size this up. We need this to be approximately 10 millimeters wide, so I'll come over to my Items tab here. If you don't see this menu, um, press N in your viewport area, and that brings up all these options here. So I'm going to hit N to bring that up, and we want this to be approximately 10 millimeters in diameter, so we're going to look at the X and Y, and I'm just going to select that, hit S, and then size this up to 10 millimeters. And that looks good right about there. Okay, now we don't necessarily want our link to be round, we want our link to be somewhat oval, maybe almost rectangular. So I'm going to look at this from the top view, and I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. And now what I can do is select this particular piece here, and hit S. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to size this along the Y axis, so that we get these two little dots, this dot here, moves up to this line, and this dot here to this line. So hit S, and then I'll just drag that up about like that. I'm going to grab this one next and hit S and do the exact same thing there, just about like so. And now I want to make it just a little bit longer along the X axis. So with this particular center dot clicked right there, I'm going to hold the shift key down. I'm going to select this one and I will hit S and then X and then I can drag this along the X axis like so. That gives me somewhat of an elongated shape. Now that is the shape of the rope that we want. And remember, we're going to have two ropes. Um, one is going to be twisted to the left, one will be twisted to the right, and they'll be circling this whole thing and joined together. We're also going to have two ropes uh, 
the joining for these particular links. You'll see that in a moment. And we're also going to have one that's going to be in the middle here. So let's work on this particular link here. To do that, I need one of my longer rope links. I'm going to come over to my Blender Gems library. And if you don't have this or you don't have the ropes, um, I showed you how to make them. So just make them to the length. And I'm going to grab in a left twist long and hit append. And that should bring in that model. And it does. Perfect. Now what I want to do with this particular model is I want it to encompass the I want it to go around or use this uh, curve as my path for this to follow. To do that, I'm going to rotate this along the y-axis, RY90. Oops, I'm sorry. Let's grab our rope, RY90. And then I'm going to hit Control-A, and then I'm going to hit Apply Rotation and Scale. So with that done now, what I want to do is apply... Uh, a curve modifier to this particular model of the rope and along the path of the curve we're going to assign this curve as its path. So I will select my rope, come down to modifiers, hit curve, and then I will select the bezier circle that we added. And you can see what it does now is it gives me that circle, circle or circumference. Now it is a little bit long and I'm going to hit S and then X and then we're going to kind of shorten this up a little bit just about like so, and I'm going to bring these together oh, ever so slightly. You may want to move your cursor away from this SX just so you get a little more control over it. And I'm going to join it like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm happy with that look. Um, it's nice and chunky with the customers looking for. That's what we're shooting for. Okay, now we need to make one that goes on the inside. And that's going to be an opposite twist. So now I believe we did a left twist long here. We're going to do a right twist medium. And we are going to put that inside of this particular link. So let's find that, that right twist medium. And that's right here. I'm going to append that. And we brought that in. Now let's just set the center origin, center of mass. Shift S, I'm going to move that into the middle, and then R, Y, 90 to rotate that along the Y axis. I'm going to hit Control A to apply the rotation and scale. Okay, now this one is shorter, and the reason we needed something shorter is because the short one's going to go on the inside of this particular link. And what we want to do now is um, use the same bezier circle, but we're going to modify this particular rope link so that it's on the inside. And I'll do the same thing. We'll apply a modifier, a curve modifier. I'm going to select the Bezier circle. And now I can take this and I can use the green arrow to adjust my position. And let's say I want it about like that. And you can see it's kind of short. We want it to come around. So I'm going to hit S, X, and then I'm going to bring that in until they meet. Right about like so. And you'll find a place where they overlap. Just about like that. And that's pretty good. We want this to come out a little bit more. <clears throat> and if you find that you don't have enough to go by in here, and I think we're just a little bit too thick, um, what I can do is select this particular model, hit size, and then I can size this down ever so slightly, and then SX, and then make it a little longer to get it about like that. And then we can size this down and then SX, and then make it a little longer and bring it in and match it like so. Okay, it's kind of what we're shooting for. Now there is a little deformation in this particular rope. Um, there's not a lot I can do about that. Uh, it's just the way the curve modifier works. And I'm just gonna play with this just to get it about where I wanna see it. And I think that looks pretty good. It looks like a twisted rope, um, double uh, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so I've got that done, and now what I want to do is create another circle for the archways to come across here. And this is going to be a slightly smaller rope to be our joining link, and it's very easy to do. So what I'm going to do here is create another circle, Shift A. I'm going to come over to Curve, and we're going to add in a circle. We're going to rotate that along the x-axis, Rx90, and then I'm going to move that, oops, Rx90. Press enter. We're going to move that over here and size that up. Okay, and then I'm going to size this along the z-axis, SZ, and we'll make that a little shorter so it's like an adjoining link. 
we want it to be about here. Okay, I like the way that looks. Are we happy with that? So far, we can make any modifications we want. Now, for this particular piece, we're going to need either a medium or a long rope. I'm going to try the... Uh, I'm going to try first the short one because I need to make this adjoining link in the middle. So let's grab two short ones, uh, short left, and we'll hit append. Okay, and then I'm going to grab a short right and append. Okay, now they're a little offset, but no big deal. We'll just uh, we'll just grab this. We'll set the origin. Uh, shift S, move that to the middle, and then I'm going to move that over just about like that. Okay, with these two selected now, what I want to do is make my joining anchor in the middle. So I'm going to grab both of these short pieces. I'm going to come over to my Edit tab and hit Union. Might take a few seconds, and that'll join those two pieces together. I'm going to hit RX90, and then we can look at this from the top and size this down so that we're about in the middle. And I want to make this a little taller, so we'll hit S, Z, and I'll make this just a little bit bigger. That way it gives us a rope type anchor in the middle of this particular piece. And we can always make that a little larger depending on how our other link conforms. Okay, that's done so far. So we've got that done. Let's work on our connecting arch that we started but didn't finish. So here we go. We're going to grab in two short ones. I'm going to grab in another uh, short right, and we'll hit append. I'm going to grab the short left and append. And we're going to do the exact same thing. And if you don't want to do that, you, here's another way to do it. Just grab this particular piece, grab that particular piece. Let's delete those. We'll grab the center piece that we just modified. Hit shift, duplicate, press enter. And now I've got a duplicate piece. And let's hit uh, R X 90 so we've sized that up and let's just make that a little bit bigger S Z S Y and we'll make that a little narrower we're gonna rotate that R Z 90 so that it goes to that particular form let's just make sure the center of origin is in the middle okay so while I've got that in the middle of the screen let's do control a to align the rotation and scale. That'll just make working with this a little bit easier when we apply the curve modifier to it. So, okay, so with that selected, let's just add the curve modifier to it. And Bezier circle number two, which is the second one, and we're gonna apply the Y uh, deform axis. Now you can see it's a little off center, so I'm just gonna bring this over. Now to bring this over, oops. To bring this over, we have to use the red arrow because of the way that the circle is formed or the curve. And then I can hit SZ and I can make this a little smaller. And I'm going to make this about half. Uh, let's see, before we do that, let's, let's just make this smaller all along the complete axis. You can see we're rotated in the wrong direction. So let's hit RZ90 and that should twist us more like a flat rope and we're not centered right so I'm just going to move the arrow until we get to about like that. I'll look at this from the side view and so far so good. Yes. Let's come back from the side view and let's just move it in place. Oh, that looks okay so far. If I want to make this a little bigger, I can do that. So I'm actually going to do that just because I want my rope here to overlap this particular one. And I also want to make this a little flatter, so S, Z. And you see I'm modifying the curve and I'm not modifying the rope. Now with that done, again, I can start making some changes here and just align it wherever I want. I want this to be about in the center, right about there, and about like that. I'm always grabbing the wrong one. You're just going to play until you get it the way you want it. That looks good. And just gonna make that a little bit bigger. Yes. 
And we're going to move this over just to be about like that. So it's an adjoining link. And I want to make this a little longer. SZ will make that just a little bit longer. So it kind of curves around. Looks pretty good. And then let's do SY. And I'm just going to try to make this a little wider. It's SX. And that looks good. I think that gives us a good point to allow us to have an overlap for the rope. And again, you can just change this to be anything you want. And if I want to make this a little thicker, I can also do that. S, Y, and I can beef this up a little bit. And don't worry about it. When we mesh this all together, it's going to blend in really well. Okay, so that is our link. Now, the only thing I haven't done now is joined all of these particular pieces together. So let's see, let's just move this down so it gives us a good anchor look. So that looks like a good double roped anchor chain link. And I'm going to hold that down and I'm going to apply any modifiers to this, which there are none, but there are to these. So I'll hit apply to all of these objects and apply their modifiers. Okay, so now I don't necessarily need the curves. We've created this particular link, and what we're going to do is duplicate this link four or five times to make the circumference of the ring, and we can stretch it along the X and Y axis depending on uh, how we want our link to look. But before I do that, I'm going to grab this particular link, hold the Shift key down, grab this outer one, and I'm going to use my Boolean tool to union those. In hindsight, as I look back at this and I'm editing this video, I probably would have selected each of these meshes, meshes and individually used the remesh modifier on each of them before applying the uh, Boolean union tool. That would have saved me a whole lot of trouble later on, as you'll see in this video, and it would have made for much better modeling. So keep that in mind. Okay, so with this piece selected here, I'm gonna grab the inner one. So hold the shift key down and we'll do a union on that. And if that gives you an error, like it did, just press Control Z. Um, I did tell you before, you can download Booltron, which is a, another add-on that works pretty good. If these start giving you errors, just use the Booltron. So we'll try Booltron and Union, and that might alleviate any problems we have with our Union. And it did, so let's grab this connecting piece here and do a Booltron Union with that. Okay, so now I have one piece. We've got that piece selected. If I press tab, you can see we've got quite a few uh, faces and vertices here. We can deform this a little bit and take down the number of faces just to make it a little easier. To do that, I'm going to go back into object mode, and I'm going to select a new modifier called uh, decimate, wherever it is right here. And we'll select decimate. And under ratio, I'm going to type in 0.45. And I'm going to hit unsubdivide. And now you can see it should have brought down our vertices. It does give us a little texturing in our model, but that's okay because after 3D printing and casting, we're not going to see that. I'm going to apply that. And now I have this perfectly new uh, reformed model that actually will work perfectly for the ring we're going to make. Now, remember, I said there was going to be four or five links depending on the size of this particular piece. We need to make this ring approximately a size seven. So to do that, I'm going to, oh, let's see here. Where's my Bezier curves? We're going to get rid of these. And I'm going to add in a new Bezier curve. I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to come over to Curve, select Circle. We're going to hit RX90 to rotate all along the, uh, the x-axis. And I'm going to make this approximately a size 16.5. So we're going to hit S and then size that up to 16.5 millimeters. Right about there. That's good enough for government work. And now what we want to do is add in a new modifier to this. The new modifier is going to be an array modifier that allows us to make copies of this particular link and encompass this circle. And we're going to tweak it as we do it. Okay, so I've got that particular link. I'm going to size this down just a little bit to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, with that done, I'm going to apply a new modifier, the curve modifier that we used before. And we're going to use this particular circle or this particular curve, which is the Bezier circle. 
and we're going to use that as our path. So you can see now we've got one link at the bottom of our circle and I can come over and then add another modifier and we'll add an array modifier and you can see it's offset and what we want this to do is uh, actually connect it. So to connect it, we need to be mindful of the order of our modifiers. And here you can see I've got the curve modifier first and the array modifier second. And that's the order in which Blender will uh, actually produce the results we're looking for. In this case, we need to move the array modifier. Because of the placement of our array modifier, I need to move this up to the top. By doing that now, you can see our links are going to get joined here. And along the X factor here, I can make this just a little bit smaller, and you'll notice that it joins in our links. So it's not quite perfect. We want to get these two, if I can get this into a better camera view, we want to get these two to look a little more like they're connected. So I may have to drop this down to 0.75. Maybe 0.7. And I think that works pretty good. And let's see here. If we look at this from the side view, we want to increase the number of links we have. So I'm going to do another one here. And I think we'll do three. Okay. Now, it looks good all the way to this particular point. And you can see now that we have just a little issue with this particular one coming too far over. And what I have to do now is just grab one of these links. If I can find the link that we had here. So I'm going to hit tab, go into edit mode just to make sure that I've got that selected. Yes, I do. And if I want to, I can select these little dots here. And that should show it what it looks like along the mesh. It does. Go back into object view. Okay, with our links selected. And here's our little problem piece right here. Just zoom in. I'm going to hit S and then X. And I'm going to shorten this up just a little bit. Now, my model is very detailed. So I have a lot of vertices and faces here so it's going to take a little time to update on my particular computer if you have a newer one with a better graphics card it might work a whole lot better okay so now if I look at this from the top view it looks like my links are pretty good and we're overlapping well enough for the double link okay there is our ring and what I need to do now is just to modify this a little bit. And how I want to modify this is I actually want a smooth center in this. So to make this a permanent fix, I'm going to come over here and apply all to my modifiers. Okay, so that's done. And now what I want to do is create a circle or a cutout. So I'm going to add in a new cylinder, hit Shift S or Shift A rather, and we're going to add in a mesh, a cylinder, and we're at 75. I'm going to actually bring this up to 150. I'm going to rotate that along the x-axis, rx90. I'm going to look at this from the side. And I'm going to size this up to a size, uh, let's see here, size 16.4 or 5 millimeters. And let's go right there. That looks good. And I also want to make this a little larger, so I'm going to hit S, and I'm going to make that just a little bit bigger. And what I want to do is I want to create an outline with this curve so that I can flatten out the inside of the ring. So I've got that done. With this cylinder selected, I'm going to hold the Shift key down and use it as a cutout and select our ring. I'm going to come over to Booltron or Boolean, and I'm going to do a difference. And let's see if that works. Okay, so that gave me some errors, so I'm going to control Z through that. And we're going to come back to our model here. I'm going to actually hide this cutout. And what I want to do is now remesh this entire model. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to come over to the modifiers tab. I'm going to select remesh because we do have quite a bit of detail and there's a lot of intersection, intersecting faces. So I'm going to try to mesh this together a little bit better so that it works easier in 3D printing. 
Okay, so now here is the step where I actually have to remesh the entire model of the ring. Now, had I remeshed those parts individually earlier, like I said before, this process would have uh, actually gone smooth and I wouldn't have had to have dealt with this. However, I want you to see what happens when you don't do it so that you know both ways of handling this problem should you encounter it. Now, I'm going to select smooth or vor vortex either way. If I select vortex, I can adjust this number here. If I select smooth, um, we'll, we'll see a little bit of a deformation of our ring here in a moment. And I can change this up to 8. Let's bring that up to 9. Let's stick to voxel here. With the voxel selected, you can see our model is meshed fairly well, even though we have some uh, weird detail. It, it looks almost as though um, it's got some texturing to it. Again, because I'll be doing this with 3D printing, I'm not as worried about that. I'm more interested in just remodeling the mesh so that I get a better uh, texture or I get a better uh, layout for the vertices and faces. So with that done, I'm going to hit apply. Might take a moment to apply all those changes. Okay, so that's applied. And if we look at our model in edit mode, you'll see we have quite a few faces, vertices, and edges, and that might be too much detail to work with. And if I zoom in here, you can see just about how detailed that is. I'm going to zoom back out go back into object mode. Okay, so I want to decimate this and bring this down from 3.7 million tries or 1.8 million faces. I want to bring that down a little bit. So again, we'll use the decimate tool. I'm going to select 0.35 and press enter. And we'll let that do its calculation. And let's see what this comes up with. Okay, so after that application, if I apply that, you can see the faces drop down to 979,000 faces. I'm going to hit apply, and we'll make that permanent. That'll make it much easier to work with our model. And you can see there's no loss in detail truly at 20 millimeters in diameter. I think we'll be fine. Okay, so our model is done. It's been remeshed, and now we should have quite a few less vertices and faces on here. So it'll be easier to work with with our modif with our cutout. So let's grab that cylinder we had here. Let's unhide it. And now what I want to do is use that as a cutout to cut out the uh, inside of this ring. So I'm just going to size this up just a little bit. Just about like that. And I'm going to use that as a cutout tool. So I'm going to hold the shift key down, select our ring, and then do a difference. And now we should get a nice flat inner surface using that cylinder as a cutout. And let's turn off invisible mode. And you can see it just did not work. So as you can see, the destructive Boolean difference tool did not work. And that will happen sometimes. So to get used to using the Boolean non-destructive tools, I would recommend those because they work just about every single time, even with poorly meshed models. So get used to using that, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. With our cylinder selected, I'm going to hold the shift key down and select our rope ring. And I am not going to do a destructive div, uh, difference. I'm going to do a modifier difference so that we can see what it's going to look like before we actually apply it. So we hit the non-destructive difference and we wait. And now we can see that we do have a flat inner surface, inner surface applied to the inside of our rope ring. And that looks pretty good. With that done, and I like the way it looks, I'm going to hit apply. And that should apply that difference permanently to the inside of our rope ring. And then we can get rid of our cylinder. And there you see, there's the inside of our ring and it's a nice flat piece. Let's get rid of this because we don't need that anymore. And now with that done, um, before I actually go to the 3D printing sec settings of uh, printing this ring out for a test pattern for the customer, I do want to show you what her first option was. Let's just take this ring again. Let's look at the uh, d dimensions of it. It's approximately 10.7 or 10 .7 millimeters wide. What she wanted was about a 10 or an 11 millimeter ring and she wanted a, initially a rope band around the outside and we did that and she wasn't too sure about that but I'm going to show you how to add that to this. Again with the Bezier circle selected we still have that. I'm going to bring in um, another rope and we're going to actually we're going to bring in both ropes a left and right long 
And again, if you don't have these in your Blender Gems, you can make them. Um, they will be available on April 1st for the new version of Blender Gems. So let's go back and take a look at that. Let's grab a long twist left and we'll hit append. So we bring that in. And then let's grab a long twist right and append that. And I've got both of those in there. I'm just gonna put this particular piece in the middle, shift S, bring that to the middle. Oh, set origin, center of mass, shift S in the middle, and there we go. And now what I wanna do is have these two on either side of the ring, one twisted left, one twisted right. So with one selected, I'm just gonna apply that to the Bezier circle as a curve modifier. So we'll add a curve modifier to that, select Bezier. And then we'll do, I believe it's Y, it is Y. And we're gonna move that out. Oops, let's cancel that. Let's move it out there. And then do uh, S, Shift Z. We wanna make that a little bit narrower just about like that, S, Z, and I'm gonna make that join in about here. Okay, and then we'll do the same with this particular piece. I'm gonna grab that, add a modifier, curve modifier to that. Again, we'll select the Bezier circle, we'll do that along the Y axis, and I wanna move that to the opposite side. I'm gonna make that just a little bit smaller and then SZ to make that a little bit longer, and then we'll just mesh it together. And this was originally the look that she was going for. Um, I think when she saw it rendered, it might've been just a little bit too busy. So I'm gonna show you this particular uh, rendering, and then I'll show you the one without the side pieces on it so that you can see what it looks like. So there's the picture of our rope ring as it was initially designed, and now I'll show you what it looked like um, when she made her final decision as to what she wanted. Okay, so this is the design that she finally settled with, and I think this looks pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this model, so let's go ahead and 3D print this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export this as a wave front object, and I have a folder for this. So we're going to export it selection only, and we'll call this rope ring and let's export that now that that's exported I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my sheet two box slicer okay so I've got sheet two box here and I'm gonna go and import that object into my slicer let's get that open desktop where is it rope ring and there's the object file I am trying Lychee Slicer. I don't particularly like it. I think it's a little awkward to work with, um, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, so here you can see I've got some modeling errors in this. Um, and before I go ahead and slice this, I'm actually gonna go do a different type of export and we're gonna see if we can fix this up. So I've got this particular model, the way I've got it here, and I am going to export this as an STL and see if that fixes it up. And again, we'll go to our rope ring. We're gonna hit selection only, and then export. Okay, let's bring up the slicer again and see if uh, now that's working a little bit better. Let's get rid of this particular piece and see if the STL fixed its own errors. And it did. So I've got my STL here, and you can see the model is in, is in pretty good shape. Um, now I, what I wanna do is orient this to print well. I'm gonna rotate this along the uh, x-axis about like so. And I think that's pretty good. I also wanna scale this up. So I'm gonna scale this to about one point, oh, one point or, or nine tenths of a percent, point, 1.09 press enter, and that should give me a good scale for a ring size seven um, in the slicing software. And I think it looks good. Let's go and add our supports. <clears throat> I'm gonna do middle, 
and I'm going to come over and hit all and let sheet two box go ahead and add in its own supports. And remember, this is a test, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm just trying to get a plastic ring or a resin ring printed so that I can show the customer and uh, go from there. There are a couple of things I want to remove while I'm at it, but uh, I think we'll just leave it the way it is and I'll clean it up when it's done printing. So with that done, I can come back here and then hit uh, settings. I'm going to print this on the Epex uh, mono printer and I'm going to use, what am I going to use here? I'm going to use the general purpose gray, I think. Or is it? Epex iPhone. Every time I update this thing, I lose all my settings. I'm sure you guys are running into the same thing. Here we're the general purpose rapid four tenths of a millimeter layer height. Uh, bottom layer count, that looks good. Three seconds looks good. I think all of these settings look good. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make sure anti-aliasing is on, and I'm going to bring that up to four. Um, that looks pretty good. I'm going to close that. Hit slice. Stick in our memory stick. Okay, that should take us about an hour and 12 minutes. I think that's good timing. And I'm going to save this out to my memory stick. We're going to scroll down here to Epax X1. And it's rope ring. I think that's pretty good. I'll leave that the way it is. Again, this is just a test. I'll let this save out. And now that it's saved, I'm going to go print it, guys. So I'll be back as soon as we're done printing. Thanks. Okay, so here's the results of our 3D printing. You can see it. the ring came out really good. And if we look at the detail in the ring, we can see that the rope texture is all the way through. We've got a nice anchor link all the way around, textured as a rope, and then the combining rope links in between each of the anchor links. That came out really good, and we have a flat surface inside, which was what the customer really wanted because she was afraid that it was gonna kind of pinch in her finger. Uh, we did that, we made it chunky enough, and if we look at the dimensions of this, we can see the inside dimension came out to, well, let's zoom out here. Inside dimensions, approximately 16.2 millimeters, which is probably a little smaller than we want. And it is all the way around, which is about what we had. We have a width dimension of approximately 11.3 millimeters, which is what we were shooting for. That looks good. And a thickness of the band at its thickest point, three millimeters, and at its thinnest point, two millimeters. That looks really good. I don't think uh, we need to really do much more to that. Again, let's just take a look and see the detail in this. And I'm gonna try to focus in on this. And you can see it came out really good. I did have to do some filing where the uh, supports were attached. So, you know, we can clean that up. And what I'm going to do just to make it a little easier for the customer is I'm going to spray paint this in gold paint. And uh, that way she can see what it's going to look like as a final result. Let's go get that done. Okay, guys, uh, here it is lightly painted. I'm not going to do any more than this. I'm just trying to give the customer an idea of what it's going to look like when it is complete. And I think this came out okay. It's not perfect. But again, this is just the 3D print and we haven't done anything with casting yet. So once she decides that she's approved this piece, we'll go ahead and we'll cast this up and get this done for her. Okay guys, if you found this video very helpful, I appreciate it. If you'd like, subscribe and share, helps my channel grow. Thanks for watching and I hope this video helped you. Take care.